All right, so for this next part, we're going to be looking at the fall of the Taisho democracy. Um, you know, we looked at the Taisho democracy. We realized that it was not really a true democracy. If you need a refresher, go watch the video. But remember, you know, who was calling the shots, the people or the emperor in a small circle? We know the answer to that, right? So next part. So the, the, the Taisho democracy, as stated before, from 1918 to 1932, Japan was going through a period known as Taisho democracy. Uh, Haru Takashi, not to be confused with the rapper, formed the country's party government. Uh, this party was supported mostly from rural areas. Its, its goal was mostly to improve Japan's economic situation and the standard of living. So basically... Uh, democracy before it fell this is what's happening okay um you know the i can't pronounce that name but the sai kai say kai something like that was a majority party in the diet uh, until 1914 until it lost the majority we're going to move on to the next one because it's not these are just like small details some of the parts are important some of the parts we can live without all right so next part so chaos in japan that led to militarism so why is this like a, you know road towards democracy falling i mean it was already failing but now it's like really failing going into reverse so what pushed japan going from an emerging democracy into to like a militarism militarism should be one of the vocabulary words that you have so in 1921 hera was assassinated people believed it was because he was corrupt and supposed uh, and suppressed left-wing politics so um Basically, people thought, like, yeah, like, he was pushing down the leftists, and the leftists came in and basically killed him, right? But the assassins basically claimed that that's not what they were doing. They just wanted to gain fame and bring revolutionary change. You can interpret that however you want. That's how your book puts it. Um, anyways, in 1923, an earthquake destroyed Tokyo, and, you know, 100K people died. During the earthquake, large fires broke out on top of the earthquake, so about 70k homes were burned down. So you have all of this destruction happening. You have the assassination, you have the, you know, the earthquake, and then the fire. Um, you have to blame somebody. Not that you have to, but basically that's what Japan was going to do. And Japan had a big Korean population that didn't like because of the whole situation with Manchuria. And so the Koreans were the easy target. And it's always like that, guys. They always blame the immigrants, whether it's them or it's not. But the Koreans were blamed for the fire and the hate. And so you have all of these hate crimes emerging against the Korean population. So over almost 2,000 Koreans um, end up dying because of these riots against them. Um, and all of this chaos and fear and hysteria, labor leaders were also arrested and executed. So again, anybody that was a little bit leftist was either killed or executed, arrested. Koreans were being killed. All of this ended up leading to the country adopting right-wing ideologies and demanding for greater security in Japan. So basically, the right-wing uh, and the right-wing politicians come in and are like, yeah, 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 see what's going on, see? We need to secure Japan right now. We need to call in into all of this. And yeah, um, let's see. Uh, the shift of ultranationalism takes place. Under this era, the government begins to adopt more liberal policies and begin to rely more on urban support rather than rural support. Um, so again, ultranationalism is heavily married to right-wing policies. The idea that everything you're doing and all the security you're bringing into your country is done for the love of your country. We need to protect our people and we can't let those foreigners come in. Those Koreans, they're, they're big trouble, man. Um, so it, it began to build closer ties to big businesses and wealthy citizens who basically saw a way to exploit this and gain profits out of this. Um, uh, it passed the peace uh, preservation law. This law was intended to curb dangerous thoughts, which gave the government an excuse to shut down all communists and anarchists in the country. So why is big business so married to the right wing in Japan and so down with ultranationalism? Because anybody who has, quote unquote, dangerous thoughts, that can include anybody who has labor thoughts. Oh, pay us better. Treat your um, you know, employees a lot better. Obviously, big business doesn't want that. Wealthy citizens who are making a lot of money out of exploiting individuals, they don't want that. They don't want those thoughts. They want to make as much money as they can by exploiting as many people as they can and saving a penny, right? 
Even with the calling for more right-wing policies and greater security, there was still an attempt to have a civil rights and granting men over the age of 25 the right to vote, which the vote was passed. Next part, again, go back if you need to go back, but we're moving on. Why was democracy failing in Japan? So Japanese politi uh, political parties uh, multiplied, but they were never really uh, able to establish themselves, especially because the constitution was so limited. This prevented political parties from being able to have a strong presence in Japan. Aside from that, political parties were weakened because they had no strong uh, popular support, corruption, a lack of cooperation, and no clear political ideology. So all of these things mixing in with all the disasters and shutting down left-wing ideology and propping up nationalism, ultra-nationalism, militarism, and weak political parties that mix all of that and you're leading to a very anti-democratic country the country found itself falling bit to bit to right uh, bit by bit to right-wing ultra-nationalism emperor showa replacing emperor tasho also added to this which you will see um what emperor showa brings into the mix uh, it, it's a more intense taisho situation all right so the next era the showa era so you know Obviously, Taisho dies, uh, his son or the prince comes in uh, and he is named Emperor Showa. He was a young man who was educated to believe in the myths of Japanese racial purity and that he truly did have the divine presence into his bloodline. So this guy just brings a whole new level of craziness. I mean, you already think everything's crazy in Japan with all the disasters that are happening and like going into the whole militarism way, right? show was like yeah no not we're not only is all of that true but guess what i'm a god and you need to worship me like straight up right so that's basically what show was bringing into all of this um the growth of ultra nationalism and the threat it posed to democracy that's what we're going to be looking at right here so during this next phase in japanese politics you had multiple prime ministers being forced uh to resign or were assassinated so again more instability there's a whole list right there you know pr uh, prime minister tanaka forced out because of the Manchurian incident. Um, another prime minister was shot and then another prime minister uh, had to resign again because of the Manchurian incident. Uh, another one assassinated. So it's just like a lot. Uh, the last one, Prince Inukai, kind of just was like the last straw like for Showa. Like basically he was like, you know, this is the last straw. This is not going to happen again. I know so many other ones were assassinated, but this is, I swear, no more. So this was a turning point for Japan towards a more militaristic government. This time period is often compared to Germany's fall in democracy. So the Weimar Republic was supposed to be Germany's way of bringing democracy to Germany. But all of that instability back in Germany caused um, what, you know, brought Hitler. So now it's you see a parallel between Germany and Japan in terms of what caused... Um, Germ uh, Italy, sorry, Japan to fall into a fascist uh, government. All right, so that's it. That's all we have for today. Hopefully, you guys, if you have any questions, obviously let me know.